Let's see how many questions we have. Okay, we have quite a few questions. Rajiv, uh, one of the questions is that uh, how easily we can customize the solution? Well, it depends upon uh, what, are, what you want to customize. If it is a single field mapping, you can go to the edit field section and create formulas and you're done. If you have custom objects integration, so certainly you have to do some legwork of knowing what the query should be or you can call us and we can certainly assess. We do have partners who can also assist you with it. And typically, the initial install and trial takes an hour or less to get the standard template working and we do provide uh, you full you know, support and you can call into our support line and they will help you install and get started. That's part of a trial. You don't need to have uh, any other charges for it. Uh, but field mappings are very easy. Again, anything outside that certainly would require some effort around it. Okay. There's another question as what is the minimum version of Salesforce you need? We provide um, professional and higher for Salesforce. Group edition doesn't quite work, cut it in because uh, we need products with opportunities to have the default template work. Now, if you don't have product in your professional edition, we can still assist you. Uh, we'll have to work around through some custom objects. But out of the box templates to work with professional with product and higher. Um, there were some questions about authorize.net or PayPal. Uh, we do offer authorize.net integration within, uh, with the application, and that's a separate product line, and you can go to App Exchange and look at it, and it's actually a template that gets installed, and you can start using it. So if you have questions around authorize.net or PayPal or any other e-commerce uh, gateway that you want to integrate with, uh, do get with us and we can see how we best can assist you. Uh, uh, let me see, any other questions from us? There's a Uh, there are a couple of questions, you know, on SQL Server and Salesforce.com integration. Yeah, great question. So uh, with databases, this is one of our data uh, products that we have. Uh, the other one that is pretty common is a data replication tool. To further confuse everyone, uh, let me show you the difference between these two product lines and their use uh, for this. The, the one that I just did a walkthrough is um, our ETL tool. We call it internally the ETL tool, which it gives you extreme control of how data moves from Salesforce to database or database to Salesforce. You can take it, map it up, and as you saw, you know, pretty much click, 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 select your fields, and you're done uh, dumping the data or importing the data. But then we have the synchronizer tool also, and it's, it has much more intelligence built in and assumes that you should be up and running within an hour. And this is very useful if you want to take a complete dump of Salesforce into your database. So you point to Salesforce, point it to your database. It automatically creates all the schema and data for you. You don't have to do it, dumps it into your database, and then you can use certain rules to even upload data into Salesforce. Really great tool for doing data migration, building uh, business intelligence or data warehouse staging environment. Uh, within an hour, you should be up and running in most of the cases. 
extremely simple to use. If you want to have much more control as how fields get synchronized up and down, which takes precedence, uh, those kind of things, then uh, you should look into our ETL tool, which the one that I just demoed. Uh, there you do have a lot of control of how fields and uh, triggers and things like that can happen. So SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, any of those uh, we can uh, we can uh, assist. So uh, again, if you need more information, we'll be more than happy to set up another demo and walk you in detail between those two products. Uh, there's a question on uh, QuickBooks Salesforce SQL Server, which is an in-house SQL Server uh, app. Yeah, certainly we can do that. We just did a quick demo, and we just have to plan out how you want to move data and which one is your master data and master record. So customers could be in QuickBooks, where products could be in Salesforce or your e-commerce solution. How do you do complete integration from your customer data and product data or assets or licenses or all those things? One question is, uh, customer information gets provisioned from salesforce.com initially into QuickBooks and SQL Server. Recurring invoices generated out of QuickBooks with updates fed to Salesforce. Changes in account information in SQL fed back to salesforce.com and QuickBooks uh, Max. Yeah, I mean, uh, you could easily do it with our product. I mean, you just have to see the precedence of how data would flow from one system to the other and which takes precedence. Uh, anytime you're integrating multiple systems, you need to know which one is the master data or should be the master data. In terms of recurring invoices, uh, it looks like you're generating an all in QuickBooks where you're likely using memorized transactions. Certainly, you can do that all within QuickBooks, and if the invoice is generated from Salesforce into QuickBooks, we do have embedded a link between the two so that we can push that information back into Salesforce. So perfectly uh, doable. Um, there's a question about uh, data mismatch between salesforce.com and QuickBooks. Uh, this is a long-running issue with every customer that we deal with. Uh, in QuickBooks, the name is kind of the primary key. So when you think about QuickBooks customer or vendor or employee that's, or even product, that's unique and it cannot be duplicated. So what we recommend is there are a couple of ways we do it. We either create another field to push it in so that you can reconcile. Uh, when we do one for the initial implementation, we can export all QuickBooks customers and then you can import it back into Salesforce or do a match so that everything is in sync. Or if you want to have a third field to match against, then we can look at those also. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, technology can only go so far in getting things together you need to have some validation checks and balance built between the two systems to match those. If there are certain simple ones to check and see, we could possibly do it, but we don't recommend uh, right off the bat. You normally push uh, the QuickBooks name back into Salesforce and do a match there if need be. <laughs> 